Chorilizol is a glutamate modulating agent that um, actually has similar effects to the drug Riliazol. So um, as you know, Riliazol is a drug that's been approved for two decades in the ALS population um, that has shown some attenuation of disease progression there. And glutamate dysfunction has been implicated in a really wide range of neurodegenerative disorders. And so originally there were some um, you know, preclinical animal models looking at glutamate dysfunction in uh, mouse models of SCA, spinocerebellar ataxia, which is what our trial studies. And then there were two studies that came out of Italy actually looking at the glutamate modulating agent really is all in ataxia patients. There was a short-term trial and then a longer-term trial. So this study was our original 201 study was in part based off of uh, some of that research. Troreliazole modulates glutamate in two ways. It, it actually increases um, glutamate transport out of the synapse and uptake out of the synapse. So abnormal levels of glutamate persistently in the synapse can be cytotoxic to cells. So it actually doesn't decrease level, it normalizes levels of glutamate in the synapse. And it's uh, thought to have some action on some selective potassium channels as well, which are implicated in cell death. So the original trial looked at patients with um, SCA, the genotypes 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 10. And the randomization phase was eight weeks with the primary endpoint being changed from baseline in the total SARA or the scale for the assessment and rating of ataxia, which is the scale sort of most widely used to assess progression of ataxia symptoms in this patient population. And what we found at the end of that eight-week trial was that we did not statistically differentiate from placebo on our primary endpoint. Um, in hindsight, probably a combination of the fact that, first off, we were looking at the drug over too short of a period of time. So what we're thinking now is what we're looking at is attenuation of disease progression. And in a set of disorders that progresses over a decade or 15 years, eight weeks was too short of a period to look at it. Also, there was a high placebo response rate, which is well described in clinical trials and neurodegenerative diseases that, that often doesn't ex extinguish until after six months. So, you know, we were very disappointed in that, but we had already had a 48-week open label phase that patients entered into at the end of that eight-week randomization phase that where all patients had the option to take troreliazole for 48 weeks. And at the end of that trial, or as patients started coming off drug at the end of that initial 48-week period, we started hearing from our investigators really across the board, you know, our patients don't want to come off this drug. They felt like their disease was improved. Some patients just thought that their disease was stable, but patients were reporting worsening of their symptoms when they were coming off drug. So what we originally did, sort of a long evolution to this study, right, is we looked at patients in our study matched by gender, age, and disease severity to a group of patients in a U.S. natural history cohort. So Dr. Tia Shizawa, who kind of pioneered that U.S. natural history study, was gracious enough to share his data with us. And what that had looked at is patients on no drug over 48 weeks. So we matched the patients on these variables, um, you know, did our own statistical analysis on it, and with statistical significance, our patients had a slight improvement at the end of their 48 weeks on their SARA scores, as opposed to the one point decline that we were seeing in the US longitudinal cohort. So it just kind of provided us with some evidence that what we were hearing from our investigators, we were sort of seeing in our data as well. So we added another um, two years of open label onto the study and allowed patients to re-enroll. And patients then had gaps in dosing where they were off troreliazole, waiting for this new phase of the study to begin for anywhere from three weeks to up to one solid year. And, um, and that had to do with really as IRB approval came through for different sites, it happened at different times, and also different patients coming out of open label at different times. So patients re-enrolled, and then at 96 weeks, we took another cut of the data. So it was 96 weeks on treatment, but for some patients, that was up to three years because some patients had been off drug for as long as up to a year. And we saw two different things. One was what our investigators were telling us about patient decline off drug was reflected in our data. So when we looked at the period off drug, um, 
we just arbitrarily split it by less than 180 days and greater than 180 days. But what we found was that duration off drug correlated with how much decline there was in the SARA. And decline is, is indicated by an increasing score on the SARA. Um, when patients resumed drug, once again, their SARA score is stabilized over time. So at the end of that 96 week period, we really were right, our patients were right at their baseline SARA scores over up to three years. So, you know, if you compare that to what you would expect from the natural history studies sort of across the globe, the more slowly progressing SCAs, the SCA sixes progress at a little under a point per year, the SCA ones at almost two points per year, um, we would have expected at least a three to six point worsening of the SARA scores at that period in time. And we did not see any at all. So it kind of gave us confidence to move forward with what we have go ongoing now, which is our 206 study, which is actually fully enrolled. And we are looking at the same group of patients, SCA 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 10, enriched for the more rapid progressors. So mostly SCA 1, 2, and 3 patients um, over the course of 48 weeks in a placebo controlled design, because you, know, you, can't, you, you can't present natural history data comparisons to the regulatory agencies and whatnot. But for us, it just provided really significant support for across the board, what we were hearing from patients, what we were hearing from investigators. And now this trial, which is fully enrolled, is going to give this drug sort of the true test uh, within this patient population. So we're really excited about looking forward to those top line results, uh, which should be coming out in the first quarter of 2022. This set of disorders, there is nothing for this patient population. You know, it's, a, it's an area of very high unmet need. And these are progressive neurodegenerative disorders that result in significant morbidity and, and death. Um, and there's nothing for these patients. So, you know, if, if indeed what we're seeing is an attenuation of disease progression in this patient population, um, and even some individual stories that are you know, very impressive, it, it would bring a lot of hope to the landscape for ataxia patients overall, because there's never been anything FDA approved for this indication globally.